And now it's time for our Stockman Lecture on Pediatric Education and Workforce, a lectureship named after James Stockman III, past president and CEO of the American Board of Pediatrics, who revolutionized pediatric medical education. This year, the American Academy of Pediatrics and American Board of Pediatrics Executive Committees chose Robin and Kevin Kinnebrew to deliver the Stockman Lecture. Drawing from their 19-year journey as parents of twins with chronic illness, the Kinnebrews will share the moments of truth that build a strong parent-physician connection and create positive outcomes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Robin and Kevin Kinnebrew. <laughs> Thank you. We are honored to have this opportunity to stand before you as the 2017 James A. Stockman Lecturers. We would like to thank Dr. Karen Remley of the American Academy of Pediatrics and Dr. David Nichols of the American Board of Pediatrics and their colleagues for this opportunity to share our story. Special thanks to Dr. Carol Lannan for the guidance she has provided. Today, we will share with you our journey from diagnosis to transition that our family continues to travel with two sons who have a chronic illness, and how you, as healthcare professionals, pediatricians, play a role in partnering with families to navigate the healthcare system. In June of 1997, our world changed forever with the birth of our firstborn children. Our twins, Caleb and Cameron, were born about two months premature and weighed three and a half pounds. They were in the NICU for about a month. However, about a week after their birth, we received a diagnosis that would impact our family even more. I remember the day like it was yesterday. We received a phone call that our sons were diagnosed with sickle cell disease. As you can imagine, Receiving a phone call isn't the ideal way to hear that your firstborn children have a chronic disease. Our initial dreams for our sons were suddenly replaced with uncertainty and fear. However, we never lost hope, our hope and our faith. This is what has guided us throughout the last 20 years. Our strength was shaped by our experiences. Some may not be familiar with sickle cell anemia, and the impact it has on the lives of those battling this terrible disease. As you know, sickle cell affects the shape of the red blood cells. They get stuck in the small blood vessels and oxygen can't reach nearby tissue. This lack of blood and oxygen can cause damage anywhere in the body, but most, most of all, it causes severe pain or a pain crisis. I've heard the pain described by a child so bad that his legs hurt, that he wished they would just cut his legs off. We question, what does it mean to have a child diagnosed with a chronic illness? Would our children spend countless days, weeks in the hospital in pain? What support is in place to help families like ours as we live with children with a chronic illness? These were just a few of the questions that we face as we anticipated the future. Having a child with a chronic illness affects the entire family and creates a sense of uncertainty. We have a third son, Kevin Isaiah, whose life is also impacted as we manage his brother's sickle cell disease. As a parent, you begin to adjust in living with the new normal and trying to balance everything. Your family routine can and will be interrupted at any time. One day our children are playing or going to school, and then unexpectedly, you're in the ER watching your child being hooked up to an IV to receive pain medicine or a blood transfusion. Ironically, today, we received a phone call from one of our sons that he was having a pain crisis. So we immediately jumped into action, making the necessary calls 
to ensure that um, he's receiving the proper care. And while we're in the back, we received a text that uh, my mother actually took him to the hospital and he's getting the, uh, the, the, the attention that he needs and the treatment that he needs. So the first four or five years of our son's lives were uneventful as it relates to sickle cell disease. However, being the parents of three kids under five years old was never uneventful. We had rationalized in our minds and became comfortable that the twins were fine since they haven't had any issues. It wasn't until our son, Caleb, experienced a pain crisis. One day, one day while learning how to swim, that the reality of this chronic illness hit us. Later that same day, we were made our first of many visits to the ER because we couldn't manage his pain at home. We learned early on that swimming in a cool pool can trigger a sickle cell pain crisis in our sons. Imagine explaining to your child why they can't go swimming with other kids because they might experience a, a pain crisis. We learned the hard way that our sons cannot tolerate swimming in a cold water unless the temperature outdoors was extremely hot. So given this, we signed them up uh, for swimming lessons at a local YMCA because they had a heated pool. Because the pool wasn't heated during one of their lessons, Caleb went from swimming to being barely able to walk. He started having a pain crisis in his feet and his legs. Because of this experience, we decided to purchase our own pool thermometer to make sure that the water was warm enough for them before their swimming lessons. So these are some of the small things that parents do uh, when they have a child with a chronic illness that others may not be aware of uh, to help ensure our kids have a normal life. Our family has been blessed to have an amazing team of healthcare professionals, pediatricians that we partner with to provide top-notch care for our kids. Their primary care physician, Dr. Bradley Jackson, and hematologist, Dr. Karen Kalanyak, at the great and the great medical staff at the Cincinnati Children's Hospital Sickle Cell Center have been a lifeline in partnering with us through this journey. Overall, our experience working with the healthcare providers have been very positive, however, We've also had some experiences that didn't leave us feeling good about the interactions. Cameron's first crisis occurred when he was nine years old. He had an infection which caused him fever, bad headaches, and some stiffness in his neck, which led to a spinal tap. After a week, he was discharged, but eventually his headaches resurfaced along with back spasms, which lasted for months. One doctor insinuated our son wasn't having back pain. It was all in his mind. This made me very upset. I've heard and read stories of medical professionals thinking that sickle cell patients are drug seekers because it requires such strong narcotics to treat the pain. I don't believe this to be true for patients who are battling sickle cell. So by Christmas Eve, Cameron was in so much pain, he couldn't walk. We were readmitted into the hospital. The hospital did a scan which revealed he had a large bone infarct in his leg. The hematologist concluded he was and had been having a pain crisis during this time which caused these symptoms. We spent about a month in the hospital treating his pain and other complications that developed. So it was during this time that we began to find our voice, to advocate for our sons and how to effectively interact with the medical team. When taking our sons to ER in the middle of the night, you know, right now I'm dressed pretty, pretty clean. <laughs> so, but when I'm, when I'm taking our sons to the ER in the middle of night, you know, I have to be very cognizant of what I'm wearing. There are times I may look a certain way just because of how I'm dressed. For example, if I come into the ER uh, dressed in a t-shirt, short, ball cap backwards, what I'd be thought of as, as a thug, once the individuals realize I'm articulate and I present my healthcare card with the name of my corporate employer on it, the perception of who I am changes. As parents, we are role models for our children. Every interaction we have with doctors, nurses, any medical professional are teachable moments. 
for us and our sons. We emphasize how important it is for them to be respectful while advocating for themselves during their hospital trips. As pediatricians and medical professionals, you may have had some unpleasant interactions with patients that have you thinking, wow, what just happened? There are times when parents have the same thought. It is during these times, it is during these interactions that both parents and medical professionals must be conscious and make a conscious effort not to categorize each other because of unpleasant interactions. Parents and advocates want what's best for our children. When we question a procedure that has been recommended or have a different point of view, my only request is that you seek to understand the patient's point of view or perspective. It is during the hospital stay where we meet many doctors and medical professionals who don't know our sons and their character. Each admission, my wife and I, are present to make sure we help set the tone and leave a good impression that will help build bridges and establish a positive connection. We try to help erase any preconceived notions of what it will be like to interact with us and care for our sons. We taught our sons to ask for what they want and what they need in a very respectful manner. Raising African-American sons, or any child, it is important to ensure we provide them with guidance on how they say certain things and how they effectively communicate their needs to their medical team. So now I'm gonna hand it over to my wife to take us from here. Hello. Um, it was very important for us to teach our sons to advocate for themselves so they could begin to navigate the healthcare system. We encouraged our sons as they got older to speak up at doctor's appointments and inpatient stays. We encouraged them to ask and answer questions about their medication. They knew the names of their medicine, what time they took the medicine, and the dosage. They explained what was going on when the pain started, what they took prior to coming to the hospital, and they also learned to communicate what pain medicine seemed to be working best for them at the time. Now we sought out other coping mechanisms to deal with the pain, so there was an alternative to pain medicine. They learned from a pain psychologist about distraction techniques and using their heating pad for comfort. We even tried alternative medicines like acupuncture, which kind of worked. Um, please remember that there are parents you are interacting with who are guiding and teaching their children to advocate for themselves. We felt like our medical team has been our partner to help us. One of the first experiences of how important self-advocacy came at a time when they were in the fourth grade. We worked with our team to develop a 504 plan, which under the law ensures that a child with a disability receives accommodations while attending school. We raised our sons to be respectful to adults, but especially their teachers. So of course they followed their instructions. And on a very cold, wintry day, there was a planned planned fire drill, and our sons were sent outside with everyone else without a coat. Although they had a 504 plan that explained what should happen, they should be allowed to get a coat. So standing outside in the cold with no coat triggered a pain crisis, which led to a very painful four-day inpatient hospital stay for one of my sons. After this event, we had an additional meeting with the principal and the teachers, um, but especially when we talked to our sons. We set up several plans that carry through to high school. One example of them advocating for themselves was a time, again, when the high school was having a planned fire drill and our sons had a pass to go to the nurse's office instead of outside. But a school staff member assisting with the drill kept insisting that he go outside. He told her politely but firmly that he had an illness and he could not go out in the cold. She said she would write him up, but he held firm and he went to the nurse's office. The principal then explained to the staff member who later came back and apologized because she wasn't aware of the situation. 
Our sons also advocate for themselves in the hospital. And just one small example of this is that they are both allergic to chlorhexidine, which causes them to have a, a bad rash. They are the first to make sure the nurses know, and they double check before they put anything on their skin. They've learned from experience just to use good old fashioned alcohol. Um, the skills that they've developed during these challenging times are skills they utilize today as students at their university. Our new dream for our sons and, our parent, and other parents with children with chronic illness is that they thrive and not just survive. We felt it was our responsibility to support them through every challenge, even if on some days I had to go in the other room and cry so they wouldn't see me. Our entire family has learned not to shy away from talking about sickle cell. We made sure that they were never made to feel ashamed because of their disease. We faced this challenge as a family. We instilled in them that they can accomplish whatever they decide to do. Then we, tr then we try to provide them with the opportunity to do it. We tried to ensure Caleb and Cameron had a balanced life or as normal a life as possible. They did everything else that other kids did. Like you see, they played soccer and baseball, and my husband was the coach for their teams, and they won some games. <laughs> um, in high school, they even worked a part-time job at Arby's. It was just sometimes we had to take extra precautions for them to participate. We didn't accept excuses, but we encouraged. We often said, life is not fair, but we still expect you to do well. Now, it was very hard to see them in pain and not be able to take it away. There were many times when our hope and our faith in God helped us get through the days when our sons were continually being stuck because their veins rolled or when the pain medicine was just not working, when the strong narcotics made them feel worse because of the side effects of being dizzy and nauseated, when we as parents have felt overwhelmed, scared, afraid, and uncertain. But our focus was to try and keep them healthy and keep a positive environment around them. And we were realistic, but we didn't accept any of the limitations that others may try to put on them. However, on days when they were home from school in pain, we were stressed trying to work on their missing schoolwork, if they could. They were responsible for checking with teachers to ensure they got their missing work. They also arranged to make up tests. And we were there to help um, if needed, but we also used our school resource person that the hospital provided to explain what sickle cell d disease was to their teachers and administrators every year. Because some years they have missed up to 34 days, and on other days when they were at school they may have been in pain or taking medicine to try and make it through the day. I remember receiving a text or a call saying, Mom, can you pick me up? And I would try to encourage them to try and make it one more bell if they couldn't make it through the day because of being in so much pain. This was an overwhelming and stressful situation for them and for me. But despite all the missing days, um, if I can just brag just a little bit, um, our sons graduated cum laude. And we're very proud of that. Thank you. <laughs> And although we as parents, we have tried to instill many things in our sons, they have their own dreams and drive to be successful. They have set goals for themselves and they continue to achieve and thrive with sickle cell. They are currently third year college students majoring in business and are respected leaders on campus. They are active as peer mentors, resident advisors, and one has been elected to student government as a senator at large for a second year. There are other children and young adults who are living with chronic illness that are pressing through the pain and medical challenges to be successful. Through the years, our sons and other kids with chronic illness have had to endure countless needle sticks and shots and undergo various medical procedures. I mention this because some may see these children as just another patient, but they are so much more. The children that battle chronic illness are warriors. They fight when they're tired, bruised, and backed up against the wall. And the parents and guardians of these warriors want nothing but the best quality care for them. And we view clinicians as important partners to help arm and empower parents like us to challenge the status quo. Just know that families and the patients, we feel very overwhelmed. We've cried, we've prayed, we've researched to see if there was anything that we were missing. 
We've had our we can handle it face on. But inside we're crushed, thinking not again, or when will this end? Please let your patients and families know that caring for a child with a chronic illness is often a difficult journey, and you will face many issues. Please tell your patients and families that it's okay to admit that you need help. Encourage them to take advantage of all the resources that are available. Encourage them to utilize their support team, whoever that is. For our family, we, we were blessed. We've had a great support team, it included our natural family, our friends, and our church family. But most of all, my husband and I were there to support each other. Remember, as you interact with patients and their families, it is truly a moment of truth. It's a moment of truth for everyone involved. These encounters will either be positive or negative. It can affect us. It can affect our children's care. It will affect our children's outcomes. Now, our transition to the adult health care system is coming soon. <laughs> which will bring new navigating challenges, but we will continue to believe that God will see us through our new journey of hope and faith. Thank you.